The galaxy, as per always, was full of life. Thousands of empires, races, species, and kinds inhabited the known universe. Thousands of wars, conflicts, and disputes carried out daily in the known galaxy. New species encountered, and depending on who encountered them first, they were uplifted, enslaved, attacked, or exterminated. The Talixi hunted sentience for sport. The Galox used some sentience for a food source. The Umaki preferred using sentience for slave labor, while the Rigoto preferred taking sentience into their god and bringing them to heal through faith. The Olivartin preferred just wiping others out, preferring to not have to deal with that nonsense. This was the way life happened for millennia, before or since, until they came. The Tanaris Imperium were the first to find them. We still remember the audio logs as they detected another race to subjugate. The sheer innocence of their voices, believing they had found another weakling to subjugate. As is galactic law, first come, first served. A fleet of 2,000 warships prepared to enter the star system bordering human space. 2,000 of the Tanaris Imperium's best ships. Their plan was simple. Go in destroy anything they saw, blockade the planet and hold it to ransom to force the Empire to surrender. Then attack the homeworld anyway, and make the locals know who's boss. The Tanaris Imperium was not ready for the monster they were about to unleash. Nobody was. Humanity was naively believed to be little more than just another speck of dust in the galactic cosmos to be trampled underfoot. Another subjected slave race to add to the statistics or another meal to be added to the tables of a hive mind. What the Tanaris found in that system spelled the end for the status quo. The Tanaris encountered a small fleet of maybe a hundred ships. As was the nature of the Tanaris, they fired first and destroyed one small cruiser in the attack. The rest of the fleet that was there evacuated, leaving nothing but a small fledgling colony behind, barely 20,000 souls. The Tanaris blockaded the planet, broadcasting their intent to slaughter everyone if surrender was refused. Tanaris warriors began to disembark, fully expecting the locals to surrender. They sent 6,000 men. 171 returned to the fleet barely a week later. The men that returned were missing arms, were bruised, with most suffering horrific mutilation. Every one of them was a gibbering wreck all repeating the same words over and over again, as the formerly proud warriors were now curled up in a ball, screaming like newborns. Don't hurt their children, they squealed. Never saying anything except that one phrase. A week. All it took was one week. One week to render 6,000 of the galaxy's finest warriors to a few hundred barely coherent babbling madmen. Admiral Torres Van Alden a name that lives in infamy, a name that even hundreds of years later is a name that all in the galaxy has pride of place in the sewage system in every city in the known universe, a name that is more hated than any other name in recorded history to all but humanity. As the human phrase goes, he cast the first stone and sent the humans a message. Humanity, hear me. We are tired of your defiance. We hold this colony as our right in the universe. Hold true to the laws of this universe and bow to your masters. I shall cast this place to the dust of the cosmos. Do not tempt my hand, future slaves. I shall have my rightful ownership of your pathetic peoples, and I shall execute 100 of your people every standard week until I hear your surrender. I shall start with your precious children. We do not know if it was hubris or naivety, but those simple words opened the gates of hell. A kind of hell that would scare even demons or eldritch monsters. An hour after this message was broadcast, a human warship fleet trickled into the system. The Admiral smiled, thinking now was his time to shine in glorious combat against a cowardly species. The smile was instantly wiped off his face as the first Titan-class warship entered the system. It wasn't a fight. It was an absolute massacre. A massacre with the precision of a psychopathic surgeon. Every ship, save the flagship, was completely destroyed. The flagship itself, 
a half mile long dreadnought was precisely struck by a human weapon that blew its reactor without destroying the entire ship. It could not have been a better shot. The massacre lasted barely an hour. The humans boarded the Admiral's ship. I will not speak of the horrors unleashed on that wreck. The Admiral's battered corpse was placed on the bow of a human cruiser as a hood ornament. Captured flight logs from the Tanaris ships were used to gain access to the network. They found the Tanaris homeworld. After cutting a mass swarm of destruction and devastation across Tanaris space across 60 systems, leaving no survivors, the Tanaris homeworld came under siege. Humans collected the still relatively intact remains of several Tanaris ships and used them as ammunition, flinging them at the homeworld. Billions of tons of steel and alloy impacted the planet's surface. The radiation leaks, sheer destructive power from the ships impacting the ground, and the toxic fallout from all the waste material and explosions rendered the homeworld into an uninhabitable cloud of poison. With this, the Tanaris were extinct. Before the galaxy could respond, a human warship fleet found itself engaged with the Elarissian Dominant. The Dominant was a corporate sector state. The humans bankrupted them by destroying their entire market, cutting off their trade routes and destroying merchant ships outright without taking cargo. Local pirates attempted to use the chaos to make a fast credit. None survived. Bankrupt and broken, the Elarissian surrendered. Humans found out they took slaves. The Elarissian Dominant no longer exists, nor does his people. Years followed, and the gates of hell refused to be sated. Any empire that operated any form of slavery or servitude was outright exterminated or destroyed to such an extent they could not recover. Any primitive civilization they encountered they blockaded and left alone. Any corporate sector state they bankrupted or outright bought. Any empire they encountered that refused surrender, they immediately obliterated. The only ones who were safe from them were those that surrendered immediately, or those that had no history they deemed questionable or morally unacceptable. Empires that lasted for 10,000 years fell in a matter of months. Piracy across the galaxy suddenly vanished. Species that lived in fear of other empires now lived under the careful watch of human warfleet ships. Species that once brought the galaxy to states of terror and horror, now were cast to the dust of the cosmos. Species that once sought honour through combat and war, now relegated to farmers or merchants, after mankind effectively humbled them through sheer brutality. Within a hundred years of the Tanaris invasion, a hundred empires lay extinct, millions of worlds now answered to terror, and thousands of species now called themselves human. Why? Humanity once answered that question. We once believed the universe to be friendly, or at the very least indifferent to us. The Tanaris provided us with the answer that it was nothing but hostile. So with the naive veil of innocence we once had, we came out swinging and did what the galaxy apparently wanted. Punch first, punch later, punch some more and only talk when your opponent no longer has arms. Everyone liked to think that the world was just a calm place. We were willing to accept the odd war here and there, maybe piracy or even corporate greed. We always have. Necessary evil and what not. But the Tanaris gave us all the evidence we needed to understand the universe's true nature. Any concept we had of innocence or friendship died that day. We went full fuck you mode and met you the way you so gladly met us. It hurt us more than you. We only wanted friendship. You showed us we needed hegemony. You showed us the only way we could be friends or allies is if we held a gun to your heads and made sure you couldn't fight back. However, we aren't like you. Unlike those we got rid of, we actually stay true to our commitments. Welcome to the Galactic Golden Age, whether you like it or not. The truth of the whole matter is that the galaxy believed we were children in a playground, with bullies and monsters to battle and fight. What essentially happened was we accidentally knocked on the Elders' door and thought they wouldn't punish us. The Elders were just as innocent and naive as we were, until we provoked them. <laughs>